Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another very special edition of the show. I say that all the time. They're all really special. But today, I got a very special guest here. We've got uh, guitarist and founder, songwriter, Kurt Vanderhoof from Metal Church and Presto Ballet. Uh, Kurt and I know each other a long time, and we uh, we haven't caught up in a bit. So we figured it was a good time to have Kurt on the show. So uh, welcome, That's my good. friend. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. It's great to be here. I'm a big fan of the show, man. I've been watching it for a... You know, for about six months, I stumbled across it, and I was like, this is great. Like, sitting around talking with your buddies about music. I mean, nothing cooler than that. So I know, exactly. <laughs> right. And before yeah. we went on the air, we were both remarking on how much we love each other's T-shirts. So maybe we should just kind yeah. of... Yeah, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I watch your show, and it's like, oh, where do you get that Heap T-shirt? Oh, I got to get one of those, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my T-shirt collection. Oh, I'm telling it's like, you. I was gonna, it was either this or Nectar, you know? I don't have a Nectar shirt, so that's that would. Have been I got it. I saw them in L.A. about four years ago, and I'm like, I gotta, I have to have a, a back. A Remember the Future shirt. I have to do it, so I had to do it. So, so what's you about Kurt? Exactly yeah. right. Um, so yeah. Kurt and I, the reason why Kurt started talking and I started talking all these years ago, is uh, you know although he's been the main guy or one of the main guys in Metal Church all these years, playing some pretty damn heavy music. Uh, Kurt's a big prog fan and uh, if you haven't mm -hmm. listened to presto ballet uh his other project that he does periodically fantastic old school analogy keyboard driven you know prog rock uh, for lack of a yeah. better term so that's how kurt and i if originally you, started talking exactly yeah if you like old kansas stuff like that you know then yeah you'd probably get it it's like a, it's a hybrid of like old kansas rush prog rock era you know sticks a little more sticks and heat kind of stuff so yep. i just kind of took all the stuff that i like and put it in a big pile yeah you know and it works it works so here we are oh, in 2020 thanks. so uh yeah. this year sucks i think we can all agree right so uh oh yeah what, yeah it's so what's going on <laughs> in the world so we saw the the um from the vault cd collection uh, which came out uh, earlier this year, which I think is a pretty terrific album because you got some new tracks on it. You got some unreleased stuff and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about the From the Vault uh, release and kind of how that came to be? Yeah, well, it's, it, was, it was kind of planned before everything kind of shut down. We were going to do it anyway because we had amassed kind of a collection of bonus tracks. And then we had some, we just finally went back to Japan and Australia last year. And it's like, okay, if we're going to do two shows in Japan, we have to record it. We have to do live in Japan. It's like, you have to, or you, you know, they'll take away your guitars, you know? So we recorded that and it was like, you know, okay, we have this, how about a couple of tracks from that? And, you know, and we got all these other songs and all these other rough mixes and uh, Joe at Rat Pack, who uh, I give a big shout out to because they're awesome there. He came up with the idea to do, you know, to do the, from the vault and bring out this other stuff. And then, you know, and, and then his uh, bundle packages that he does, you know, with the, com the comic book. You know, you've arrived when you have a comic book about you. So, you know, the, you know, the comic book and all the other stuff to it. So we thought it would just be kind of a fun thing. And we had planned it. And then everything shut down. And we figured, well, this would be a great way to keep the fans engaged. You know, and it's something that we wanted you to do to get rid of all the stuff that we, the collection of bonus tracks and all this kind of stuff. So we thought it would be, you know, really a fun thing to do. And then, you know, and now we can start amassing another collection of bonus tracks from albums coming up and stuff. So it could be from the vault later or something. So yeah, we just wanted to do something, you know, to, cause we had all this bonus stuff, you know, didn't have a home. So, you know, and then he did his, all his fun stuff with stickers and vinyl and all that. So yeah. 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 It's good to get the bonus stuff out. You don't need to keep that in the vaults for too long. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're not saying oh, this is just great stuff and it's the best album, the best stuff we've ever done. No, this is the stuff for whatever reason we didn't put on the record. Not that it sucked, but more that it was might not have fit with the record at that point, you know, and it might not have, uh, you know, just kind of been in there. But it was just stuff that we didn't want to throw away because that yeah. stuff happens. Like I write songs and record stuff like that's terrible. Nobody's ever going to hear that. Delete, you know. And yeah. but then there's the stuff that like, oh, that's kind of cool. But let's just kind of put it over here. Yeah, because yeah. I think like the new, tr the you know the uh, the previously unreleased newer tracks that are on the album. I mean, you know, yeah, maybe they don't fit perfectly on Damn If You Do or the uh, the eleventh album, right? But they're still really right. good songs, and they deserve to be heard. Oh, cool! Thanks. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And then we had like three new songs, uh, new songs that were kind of unfinished that we really let Mike and I went, wow, I really like that. Why didn't we finish that? You know, neither one of us had an answer. Let's finish those, you know, and those were like, uh, I can't remember the name, but the three new songs, you know, on there. So, so how cool, I, he's been back for a while now, but how cool is it having Mike yeah. back in the band? It, he made the band continue because uh, when Ronnie left, I was like, man, there's not a fourth singer. I'm not, I'm not going to you know if, if there's not a fourth singer, that's, that's cheesy. You know, that's now. Nah. So, and I had been talking to Mike about, and we had, we had kind of connected after uh, not speaking for a long, long time. I mean, for no reason other than just life. And, you know, we were still great friends. And for some reason we had connected and then Ronnie left and I had already been speaking to Mike about doing something. How you been? You know, good to see you. You know, how's life? Maybe we should work together again. And then Ronnie left. Uh, want to come back to metal church? <laughs> and he thought about it. We worked, yeah, we worked it out and it was like perfect. Cause I just, I couldn't like, okay, we need another singer. This is singer number four. It's like, no, nah, to me, that was like, that was a sing. No, that was like, no, it's, it's, it's done. Leave it alone. Move on. <laughs> Leave it alone. Yeah. So Mike, Mike, Mike en enabled the band to continue. And also going back to having, you know, the second singer from the original era kind of validated even more. Besides Mike and I never got to be in the band together at the time either so that was that's great. right oh yeah that's right i never thought about that yeah yeah it's yeah, funny because so. like it, it reminds me of a conversation that martin and pa martin popoff and i were just having about the band riots okay so here was a band that just made a habit of changing singers all throughout their career and we were talking about how did that perhaps hinder greater success for that band so you you basically just confirmed that it's like you know what it's like if we're going to continue to do this we're not just going to get another guy because then all of a sudden right. we become one of those bands that just replaces the lead singer all the time and people that lacks the identity so what you did was you brought back a exactly. classic singer yeah right right well that's one of the things like when you know when i left the band when when we had to let dave go back in the day it was like we knew what we were doing we knew that okay when you lose a singer and especially someone like dave wade who had a real signature voice we knew that you, know, you change the you can change virtually everybody else, but the singer is the signature sound. I mean, for your average listener, that is, and there's just no way around it. Dave had a signature voice, but we also knew that we couldn't continue with him. And I was at the point after the touring and everything we did after the second album that I was going much more into the studio world, you know, and didn't want to drive around the country in a bus. You know, shows are great, love playing the shows, but the 22 hours the rest of the day, I'm bored out of my mind you know like lots of people so we we had to take that risk we knew the risk we were taking so you know but yeah so it's just to change the singer again you know it you become a cover band you know a high-end cover band unfortunately and uh, you know so yeah i think yeah it becomes it's you keep changing it and then you lose your identity and then people won't take you seriously anymore. yeah yeah and i'm the same way with bands that i like that do that then i'm like Man, it's just not the same it's like, yeah, it's good, but I don't care. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> so I got a silly question for you. And this uh, has been coming up amongst many people I've talked to over the years and even going back to day one. And I've been following you guys since day one. Oh, um, cool. When I talk, when, when the discussion of Metal Church comes up, most people say, I love them. What is Metal Church, though? It's like not kind of thrash, but not kind of power metal, but not kind of classic metal but not how do you for someone who has never heard a lick of metal church's music from the the debut album all the way to damn if you do they never heard anything how would you describe your music to someone who has no clue never heard anything well i think uh, yeah that's a really good question and because and, i think about that a lot because we don't fit in really anywhere into all the sub genres of things you guys are like armored saint armored saint i think is exactly the same yeah, exactly. I, and I think that's why we the last tour we did of Europe was us and Armored Saint. It <laughs> makes like, sense, right? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it was awesome. So, yeah, Armored Saint, I mean, uh, for Metal Church, I think you would have to, if they never heard Metal Church, that's fine. But if they know what heavy metal is, the whole umbrella of it, we're a little bit of all of that, you know. And that's one of the things that I in a way as kind of the main writer take pride in the fact that we didn't get stuck in okay, here's where we work. Here's our template to work from. It's this much where we can kind of go like that, you know, yeah. and, and which is, 
important for me to be interested in what we're doing. You know, it's important to like, okay, I will, hey, let's go over here and try this a little bit, you know, still trying to keep that within the, the, the umbrella of heavy metal. So I guess if there is a simple answer, we are old school heavy metal, whatever that encompasses. I think that's about the only way I can describe it. You know, yeah. we're not thrash, we're not black, we're not death, we're not, <laughs> yeah, did my dream, blah, blah, you know, any of that stuff. So, and I'm very proud of that, that we're not any of those. But we right. were kind of thrashy in the beginning because that was kind of where we were, you know, we were part of, you know, we yeah, were the first down. Yeah. yeah, us, Metallica, Anthrax, and all our peers at the time, the Slayer. So we were part of that. But as we went on, and especially after Mike joined the band, we became much more melodic and much more, which was great for me. I mean, that was my preference, you know. Yeah, I love, you know, the younger I was, you couldn't rock me hard enough, but I think everybody goes, as you get older, you start listening differently and start enjoying different things, even though you love that, you know, that's great, but you start expanding a little bit. But by today's standards, we're a hard rock band. Yeah, you're true, absolutely. absolutely. And that's, that's cool with me, I mean, that's fine, you know, but yeah, nothing wrong with that, you know. Yeah. But yeah. by today's standards, we're definitely, you need to listen to the stuff that's, you know, the Panteras and the stuff that's grown from Pantera. It's like, wow, no, no, we're just... No. We're, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> no, we're not there yet. We're not that cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you caught any of them, but we did a, a bunch of episodes recently where we talked about some of the absolutely horrific album covers in hard rock metal history. Dude, and did you bring us up? I didn't watch that one. I didn't have to because so many of our viewers did. So that Hanging yes. in the Balance album. so The worst album cover in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming you guys had nothing to do with that, right? No, it was one of those things where we had horrible management at the time. Again, I was not in the band at this time, but I was working in the studio writing songs and working as, you know, outside doing my thing. And they came and Mike came to me just horrified. He goes, Kenny just brought the, uh, or management, uh, whatever his name was, just brought the new album cover. It's horrible. He's mortified. And I looked at it and was like, I tried to be nice because it was like, this is it. Cause you don't have time to change it. Oh boy. Yeah. One of those wonderful record company moments, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. It was like, uh, yeah. It's like, it's like the story. It's like Ian Gillen's story when he was with black Sabbath, he's like, Oh, and then, uh, you know, we did the album and then they handed me a copy of the album cover and I vomited instantly. He's like, what is this? Right. <laughs> this is, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I had forgot, yeah, oh, no, forgotten we, about we that. We have a right? few other bad album covers too, you know. But, right, but I think that's the worst though. I mean, that's like by far. Well, the that's worst. not just the, our worst. It is not only our worst, it is the worst. <laughs> well, there's probably more maybe that I have. Yeah, seen. no, there, there is worse, but yeah, that's pretty bad. It's like, We had yeah. a lot of viewers who brought that one up. It's like, I can't believe nobody mentioned that Metal Church album. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. Well, that. now you got the guys mentioning it now. It's like, yeah, <laughs> if you could have been in the rehearsal room when we saw that, we all looked at each other and it was like, you know one of those moments we're all just like and it's called hanging in the balance i think that says way too much about our career you know because that was when the band just poof blew up you know? yeah that's it right it fell it off like a cliff oh. everything well that's the last the last straw right there yeah <laughs> it's oh, over man. yeah but unbelievable we resurrected but it was, yeah. so it's been two years since the last uh, studio album um What's in the uh, immediate future for Metal Church? You got, uh, so you guys album. working on any songs? Yep, yep, I'm doing that right now. Yeah, it's been, uh, I've been in the process of relocating um, from Washington down to Southern California, which is where I'm at right now. So sold my house up there and doing all that, but the shutdown stopped everything. So I'm about six months, like everybody else, six months behind in that, but that's all happening. So as soon as I get reset up in a couple of weeks, the house is closing um, in a couple of weeks, new place, and I uh, get the studio set up. And uh, got the, my little uh, my little dictaphone full of riffs, you know, sitting here like this, going, "Oh, that's a good one." You know, put that on. So yeah, it's going to be a new album, and then a new Presto album. So. All right. So that was my next question. All right. Oh. So we haven't seen Presto Ballet now. I forget when the last one came out. What was the, what was the year of that oh, last one? I boy, a couple of years ago now. Uh, yeah, the, the days between. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah a couple three years now. Yeah, I think. So. so cool. So talk a little bit about with how that's coming along and who's going to be on that record and all that. Um, as far as I know, it's going to be uh, 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 Scott Albright, the, the original singer, might be coming back to do that. Um, we're still trying to figure it out. Presto's a tough thing, and it's hard to keep the band together in the sense that it's hard to get gigs when you're a prog band. 
Yeah. You know, there's nowhere to play. So it's really hard to keep people interested in things like that. And uh, so we're trying to figure that out right now. I mean, with scheduling and stuff with Chuck, the singer on the last two records, um, you know, he's got other projects and family and, you know, that whole kind of, that whole thing. So, um, but it's definitely, it's going to be a follow up to Relic of the Modern World, which side two is a story. And so the, it's going to be the obligatory, kind of like the Live in Japan, it's going to be the obligatory prog rock double concept album. I mean, you have to. You got to do at least one. You know, so yeah, it's absolutely. Be, yeah. It's like I mean, a prerequisite, right? Right. A prog 101, right? It's like, well, you have to, one of your albums has to be a double album. It's got to be a concept yeah. album. So do your homework, get it ready, and put it out, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I have the storyline, and it's going to be the part two of uh, Relic, which is the story of Andy who disappears and et cetera. And it's what happens to him later. And it's like, oh, now that sounds like fun. Really get out there and get really proggy and really go out into that arena. So that's going to be the next one. Cool. You guys getting your Mellotrons out and your Hammond organs and the uh, oh boy, it's all it's all ready to go, man. Yeah, it's uh, all ready to go. Yeah, I really think that like if there are folks who have not checked out the old Presto Ballet albums, they'll be really really surprised at how really good and analogy they sound and just like I mean, you said it perfectly at the top of the hour. It's like you know classic sticks and heap and deep purple and maybe a little genesis here and there it's very accessible but it's got those big crescendos and the really hooky it's got the kansas elements as well yeah. so yeah well, yeah, so, that, yeah that's so, the goal i mean that's the bar that i set for myself it's like this stuff is you know 50 years old or whatever and i still love it you know why do I love this music so much? So I try to get all the elements of that and put it into something and try to do my version of that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an interesting story too. Here, you know, you have a guy from a very popular, you know, heavy metal band for so many years who, you know, probably your, your, one of your true loves was that type of music, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. more progressive stuff. So when, what, take us back to that day where you said, you know what? I'm going to do put together a band and do this. I got to do it. When, when, when did that actually happen? And, and how did it, that work? Okay. Well, it was okay. I had the two solo albums, the two Vanderhoof records. And that's where the thing, when that point started, there was no metal church. There was, there was, you know, nothing, nothing was going on. I just was like, okay, what am I going to do? You know what? I'm not going to think about, you know, what's going to make me money. What's going to sell. It's like, which has always been a problem of mine because I never think about that. So, um, I was like, what do you love? Because I hate music when it's done, when you can hear the money talking so much that they were trying to do that. They were trying to make money. It's like, I just, I can't hear the music. They're talking about the money too much. So my version of that is like, what do you love? And I thought about it for a while. It's like, well, what do you still listen to all the time? I'm still listening to Uriah Heat and Led Zeppelin and the stuff I grew up with, yeah. you know? And one of the things at that time in the early 90s, or well, <clears throat> maybe later 90s, I think, whatever, I'm terrible with dates, I also realized how much I love the Hammond organ. Just that cement mixer <laughs> sound that you never hear anymore. Or if Nothing hear, better. There's nothing better than that. I know, it's like biting into pork fat when you get that <laughs> grinding, you know. And it's just like, I never hear that anymore. And it was like, oh, I love Deep Purple. I love Uriah Heat. And all that stuff. And it's like, you know, I've never worked with keyboards before. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to open up a whole new door. And then I discovered the Mellotron. And we're like, that's what it is. That's the, oh, I need one. So I scoured the country and found one. Actually, a couple of them. And I have a real one. And so then that opened up the door to the analog synth thing. Because I didn't want to do the digital thing. Especially back then, they weren't all that great. Now they're pretty good. But I still use the real one. So it was... It was a matter of, okay, first, so the Vanderhoof stuff was just rock, very more sticks, heap, just straightforward rock stuff. But that morphed into, like, reminding myself how much I loved ELP and Yes and all the prog stuff. It's like, but I never tried to do that because it was always so, that's for the really, really good guys. To, and I'm, you know, I never, you know, I don't know how to do that. And I was like, well, you still listen to Song for America like it just came out. You know, and that's one of my favorite albums of all time. And so it was like, it just, it just morphed into that. The Vanderhoof solo stuff just morphed into Presto Ballet. Yeah, it was just kind of a natural progression and I was just really thrilled with it. The only downside is that it was hard to keep the thing together because there was nowhere to play. It was hard to keep it busy, you know. Yeah. We've yeah. done a couple of gigs, but we never got enough gigs to where we got good live, which is, 
you know, especially playing that kind of stuff was really hard because it's very, it's a little more complicated, bigger arrangements and all those kinds of things. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But I, I just do it because I love it. You know? Well, yeah. And that's what, that's important, right? I mean, you have to yeah, love that, it. That's the most. Important. Yeah. I remember when, when the first album came out, um, and I don't even remember how I stumbled upon it. I mean, you know, I've been a follower of Metal Church for many years, so obviously knew you, knew knew that band, and then I saw this Fresno Ballet thing. I was like, oh, this should be pretty good. And I don't even remember whether the, the label at the time sent it to me for review. I don't even remember. The first uh, album was on Inside Out, so they probably so, oh, so that it. explains yeah. it. Okay, yeah, so yeah. they would have yeah. sent it to me, and I remember reviewing it, and on the website, this is way before the YouTube channel, loving it, absolutely loving it, praising it everywhere I could. And then that's when you and I, got got yeah. hooked up i think by email you were like thanks so much for the review it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. someone who gets it right and and i said okay yeah thanks kurt you know it's a great album and i, I want to see more and i think we had some discussions at the time about lack of a venue to kind of go out and play right and i think we right. talked about you know because at the time this is i mean how many years ago is this 20 years ago right <laughs> Probably something scary like that. Right, something yeah. like that, right? So at the yeah. time, the only real, in this country anyway, the only place where you can go be a band like that and play are those prog festivals, which they had a number of them back in the day. So you had Nearfest, you had uh, Prague Day, you had Prague West, there were a couple other ones here and there. We, yeah, and we played Cal Prague. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, yeah. yeah. That, that was like our first gig. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. But that now that doesn't exist anymore. Not here mm -hmm. anyway. I know. I mean, so I actually took it to the next extreme. It's like, okay, there's an there's a magazine in England called Prague. I better go to England, you know. So I literally was going to move there. So I went over there and checked it out. And when it's like, okay, what's it going to cost me to live here? I want to get be, become part of this. I want to do this is the kind of music I want to play. And there's a whole huge full glossy magazine. Lot seems to be a lot of fans. But I got there, and then at that particular time, it was just completely unaffordable the exchange rate for dollars and it was like yeah you no know, and then as things have turned out that was a good thing <laughs> i didn't move there but you know but that was i was trying to do that you know so then i just came back well i'm just going to do the best i can with presto i'm going to keep doing it because i love to do it and the people that do hear the record seem to really enjoy it so that's enough yeah yeah I, I, you think about it i mean you've got can kansas is back making new music again new new mm -hmm. lineup making new music again uh, on inside out is it like too far out of the realm of possibility that Presto Ballet could open up for Kansas on a can? Because Kansas tours all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is there? I mean, I quite frankly, I would much rather see you guys opening up for Kansas than some singer songwriter guy with an acoustic guitar sitting up there playing shit that nobody wants to hear for thirty minutes, right? <laughs> I, I mean, exactly. Right? Yeah, I you know we, we've pursued it. Yeah, uh, but we've uh, you know we got a hold of Phil and. At the time we were ready to go do it, they weren't having an opening yet. But that there is a way to get in touch. I mean, once we do a new record, and now that we're actually working with uh, Rat Pack, you know, <clears throat> maybe when the next record we'll have enough, you know, have enough juice that we could actually get some attention to go do something. Because I would love nothing more than to go do that. You know, I love going out, and, you know, Metal Church. You know, I don't know what we're going to be doing this year after the record, but you know, that's all great and fine. But at the same time, I really would love to have Presto have a chance, you know, to really see if there's anything that could become of that more yeah. than what it is now. But right. yeah, it's totally within the realm of possibility, at least in, at least in our mind. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, well, here's another idea for you, too, if you're up for the challenge. And I know it's a little bit outside the box, but how about Metal Church goes out on tour and the opening act is Presto Ballet and you got to do double duty every night. Would you I, do that? I would love it. I would love it. I would totally, I would absolutely Because love a lot it. of metal fans love kind of harder rock and prog, right? And I, I quite honestly, a lot of the Presto Ballet music, I think, would totally uh, be up the alley for a lot of guys who like more you know who like metal but appreciate the heavy stuff like purple and your right heap and all that kind of stuff they would get it they would get it yeah Ab oh absolutely i mean we opened for we opened for dream theater in portland and uh and we went over great i mean way better than i thought they totally got it but that's a prog band you know but yeah. they're very 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 heavy you know yeah. and they, they were so good um but <laughs> <laughs> it was just like you know just like watching those guys is like i'm done you know <laughs> <laughs> wow they are pretty amazing i i, I just had this yeah. great conversation with john petrucci the other day he came on the show and uh yeah i mean they're, they're amazing they're they're absolutely yeah and amazing. super nice guys super yeah. great guys yeah. but i could totally see that i could i could see presto ballet on on the dream theater bill on a symphony x bill on a camelot bill <laughs> i mean it's 
you know. Yeah, you can do it. Oh, we have dogs. Uh, I'm, I'm used to that. I have three here, so. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay there you go. Bye-bye. No, sorry, no, no. <laughs> Get out. It's like, I love you, but you're not welcome right now, right? Yeah, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So I guess so we can expect hopefully new music from Presto Ballet 2021. Absolutely. Same thing with Metal Church. 2021, 2021 Metal Church, uh, Presto Ballet. Um, yeah, and then I also I did a solo album two years ago, um, and it was a a personal challenge, just something I wanted to do. It's yeah, and uh, it should be coming out after the first year. Uh, it's called Brainchild, where it's just. 70s old school guitar riff rock. Oh, love that. Yeah. It was like, because one of the best albums in the world is Montrose's first record, right? So I was like, you know, I just want to see if I can do this. So I did everything drums, everything, vocals, everything. Not because I think I can, it's just because I wanted to do it. You know, I wanted to try it. And it came out okay. I can listen to it. But I don't have to like hit eject right away. So, <laughs> you know, musically it's fine, but the whole vocal thing was just something I wanted to try to do. And it was like, you know, I mean, I've spent years and years and years and years telling singers how to do it. You know, like, okay, I'll splat, I'll sharp, do it again, a little more, agile, you know, doing that, you know, producing a record. So I'm like, well, why don't you just do it yourself? So I have that. That should be coming out after the first of the year. So if you like just classic, just it's just real bare bones guitar riff rock. It was called Brainchild. So that I would definitely out. want to hear that. Yeah. Okay. I, lo I love that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, you know, da, 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 con, con, you know, just that you know, rock the nation, just here's a riff, and, you know, what it is. And just another thing where I just was like, I just, I need to do this. I have no idea if it's anything's going to happen, but it was a lot of fun. And there's another avenue to do that, you know, if, it, if you know, just, hey, I want to do that, and maybe it'll be even better. Yeah. And also, interesting, you brought up Riot because it was, uh, um, I've been working with and we're just finishing up a record now with Todd Michael Hall from Riot. And him and I have been working on a record for his solo album. Wow, so, very cool. Yeah, yeah, he, he's awesome. He's amazing. He just came so funny to see him on The Voice, too. You know? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he, he got way up there on The Voice. Yeah, wow. that, which I show, I know I don't watch television, but yeah, he was on. You know, he was on that and he got a hold of me. We had played with them with Riot 5, I think is what they're called, yep. in Switzerland a few years back and we kind of became friends. And then he got in touch with Rat Pack and, hey, well, why don't you get in touch with him? So we ended up doing a thing together. So that'll be coming out later. So, wow. So a lot of good stuff coming up. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. You know, who'd have thunk, you know, this point in my career in life that I'd be. 2021 is going to be the year of the Vanderhoof. I mean, come on. It's like <laughs> Exactly. Well, it's, I, I had a theory too. It's like after the lockdown, it was like, you know what? When all this is done, there is going to be a buttload of albums coming out and babies. You know, everybody's yes. just going to be, you know, everybody's like, well, I might as well do my Sergeant Pepper or my Dark Side of the Moon now. And, yep. you know, everybody's at home, might as well make a record. So there's going to be a ton of records coming out, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All good stuff. All right. So we'll put, put 2020 great, yeah. to bed and let's move on to 2021. Already. Absolutely. It sounds like a lot of good stuff happening. So Yeah, 2021 is going to be awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Good. Can't wait. Can't wait. So I want to thank Kurt Vanderhoof so much for coming on the show and talking with us a little bit today about all this great stuff that's happening in, mm -hmm. in his side of the pond and uh, cool. a lot of great music coming. So uh, Presto Ballet, Metal Church, solo stuff, all this, all this stuff. It sounds yeah. really, really good. Can't wait for, it, for all love of it. Love it. Thank you, man. It's been an honor to be on your show. I keep watching it. I love it. Uh, keep continue to watch and we're going to have you on again so once all this stuff gets released we're going to have you come on and we're going to talk about it because hopefully I'll, I'll have had a chance to hear it by then and uh, we can Anytime. talk more specifically about it so very cool and uh, don't forget this is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Big thanks to Kurt Vanderhoof. I am Pete Pardo. See you guys all again later on. Take care. Bye-bye.